If you want to install an inline switch onto a cord, the first step is to buy the correct switch for your needs. You'll need to know the maximum amps that will be drawn on the cord. Check the label on the device that will be attached to or plugged into the cord to find out how many amps or watts it uses. If you only know wattage, you'll have to do a little math. Watts divided by volts equals amps. A 100 watt incandescent bulb divided by 125 volts, that's the supply voltage you'll find in the United States, is 0.8 amps. Each one of these LED bulbs is 5.5 watts. 5.5 watts times 4 is 22 watts divided by 125 volts is 0.176 amps. These are two common inline type switches. This one's rated 3 amps at 125 volts and this one is rated 6 amps at 125 volts. To find the maximum watts for a 3 amp switch multiply 3 amps times 0.8 that's 80% of 3 amps. It's a good practice to use only 80% of the switch's rating. To find the maximum wattage for the switch, multiply 2.4 amps times 125 volts. And that equals 300 watts. The best practice maximum voltage for the 6 amp switch would be double of the 3 amp switch, which would be 600 watts. Identify the cord onto which you're installing the switch. Printed on the conductor cover that's attached to the narrow prong of the polarized plug identifies the type of cord as SPT1 and that it's 18 American wire gauge to conductors. This switch is to be used only with SPT1 18 American wire gauge. A larger cord won't fit through the holes in the sides of the switch or through the inside of the switch. Because I had an insulation piercing type connection almost cause a fire in my home, I refuse to use this type of switch. I prefer the terminals on the 3 amp Leviton switch and will install that one. 18 gauge two conductor flat flexible cord can be used with this switch. Type SPT2 cord has thicker insulation than type SPT1. Mark the wire. I'll also mark the hot wire. That's the one with the printing on it. If the cord doesn't have any printing on it, the hot conductor is the one with the smooth covering. The neutral wire will have a raised rib on the outside of it that you can feel with your thumb. If it's color coded, white is neutral and black is hot. Carefully slice the covering between the two conductors. Ensure that you haven't cut into the copper conductor. Cut the hot wire. I'll use the 18 gauge hole on the stranded gauge of the wire strippers. I'll strip the wire back about three quarters of an inch. Best practice is to tin the ends of the wire. If you don't tin the end of the wire, it'll spread out under the terminal like this. It's likely that you don't have a soldering iron. You can tin the ends of the wires with a lighter and some 6040 rosin core solder. While we are waiting for the solder to melt, always break the hot wire when installing a switch. If the plug on the cord is non-polarized, that's a plug that can be inserted into the outlet in either direction, I recommend installing a polarized plug. A non-polarized plug can cause the neutral wire to be switched, a potentially dangerous situation. After tinning both ends of the wires, 
I'll bend shepherd's hooks. Plan the bend so that when the terminal screw is turned, you are turning the screw towards the open end of the shepherd's hook. The hook should be bent like this. While you're tightening the terminals down, to prevent the wire from sliding out from under the terminal, gently pull the wire away from the terminal while you're tightening it. When completed, the connection should look like this. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name and know how now to find other videos. And yeah, thanks for watching.